holy damn you need a wash yeah that rain last night really didn't do much justice for my car <laughs> but damn does she look good so yes first thing we're doing is we're giving her a wash me why I'm cleaning my car on a day that's raining but we're doing it we're doing it <laughs> wheel straight and the beautiful airing out yeah <laughs> here we go One thing that I quickly realized about that wash was that my car has quite literally got it stuck on. <laughs> so it's gonna need a proper wash. That did absolutely nothing. So, lovely. That's right, that'll cheer us up. G'day guys, how are we? So in this video, I'm going to be talking about something that um, I don't really want to talk about. But, <laughs> but, but we're gonna do it. Off the title, you guys already know exactly what we're talking about. Um, I'm gonna go and get to where I'm gonna get to to talk about it, and I guess we'll get started. So I'll see you guys in about half a second for you guys. See you so then. All right, so without falling over, in this video, what you guys are gonna be hearing is, like I just said, something I, re <laughs> I really don't wanna talk about, if I'm being honest. Um, it's basically how much I've spent on, on this money pit. <laughs> So, um, I've actually got a really good idea. Hold up. Just, just because I know it's going to be a really long video, I've gone and bought myself a chair. So, I'm going to bring you guys in a little bit closer. Um, it's a little bit of a different style video, but like, we're in lockdown at the moment, so I'm struggling to, I'm not struggling, it's just, it's a bit hard to get things so I can install parts, if that makes sense. So I'm getting out my phone um, and I've made a list and all the prices and everything of everything I've ever done to this car. Definitely forgotten things. Let's get started. <laughs> so the first thing I'm gonna talk about, um, I'm sorry if you guys can hear a little bit of wind. I'm honestly sorry, I'm praying it's not. If it's too bad, I'm probably gonna to have to refilm this video, which is absolutely what I want. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna talk about is actually buying the car. So the car cost me to get it on the road, including roadworthy and everything, it was $18,500. By the way, this is all Australian dollars. So $18,500 to buy the car, get roadworthy, everything on it. It was a really, really good deal in my opinion. Had 60,000 kilometers on it, was bone stock. Like I'll put a, vi I'll put a photo of how stock it was right here. Um, yeah, it, <laughs> it was pretty damn stock. So the first thing I did to the car was take out the immobilizer, which if you guys don't know, it's like this little, um, basically like a lock that makes it, so you have to put in like a pin code to start the car. Um, it's really frustrating. I don't remember what the code was. I think it was the, the guy previous owner to me is date of birth. It's like 1970 something, like something like that. Um, but I've gone and completely taken mine out. That cost me $600. It was, yes, <laughs> it was a huge rip off, but it needed to be done. And I wanted to go somewhere that knew what they were doing. So yeah, $600 to remove the remo immobilizer. So the next thing I did to the car was I went straight to my, what was it? I think it was tire power, which in Australia is, I guess they do tires and wheels and everything. They sell it all. Um, so I went there and I bought the wheels that was on the Nardo Gray, which I'll put right here. Um, so with those wheels, they were very cheap wheels. Um, they did the job, they looked really good to be honest. 
Um, the fitment was a little bit whack. It wasn't too bad, but at the same time, it wasn't exactly where I wanted it. And yeah, so that cost me 1100 just for the wheels themselves. Um, that What were they? They were CSA Macos, I think. They were an 18 by 8 plus 42. So yeah, they were a little bit of a weak sort of wheel, um, but they looked good, so I was happy with them. And to put the tires on them, I got um, Toyo Proxies. And that was nine hundred dollars. I had a well, they had a a, um, a three for four deal, if that makes sense. So I buy three and get one for free. The next thing I did was put the big old STI wing on the back. So the next thing I did was put the massive STI wing on the back. That cost me three hundred dollars for just the wing, and it was just like this was. I think it's plastic or something, I really don't know. And then it was $500 to paint. I got across the road to paint it from work. Yes, they're extremely expensive, but they do a really, really, really good job. So I was happy to pay that amount of money. So all up for the wing and getting it painted, it was $800. So the next thing I did to the car was add the front lip. I don't know if you guys can see the front lip from here, but the front lip. I've, went, I've actually went through three of them from cracking them, and not even cracking them, just completely bursting them. Um, the first time was going off road to go to a work site, went and hit a massive pothole and it went bang. So that was that was an interesting one. Uh, the second time was trying to get up into a car park and that didn't end well, to say the least. Yeah. <laughs> and the third time, well, it's still on here, but I need to get another one because it's like really grinded off. Um, but that's the whole beauty of learning how to drive a lowered car when you don't know how to drive a lowered car. You all just make mistakes and everything. So yeah, all up it was $450 for all the lips. So the next thing is, I went through like a big sticker phase. I think everyone does this when they're into cars. Um, some people still really like it. I personally rather the cleaner sort of look. I spent definitely more than this, but I'm gonna put a hundred bucks on there because I had like that win window spine and had a big window banner that I definitely overpaid for every single one of those stickers, especially when I can make it myself because it's pretty much my job. So yeah, I'm gonna say a hundred bucks for that sticker sort of stuff. The next thing I did was I wrapped the car Nardo, which was the last color, which I kind of missed, but I kind of don't. But yeah, to wrap it Nardo, it cost me $800, which was because it was, I think it was about, what was it? It was about $1,500 for the vinyl and $300 because I got one of the guys from work to help me wrap it. I paid him $300 cash to help me wrap it, which was good. And then... That stayed on the car for how long? Just over a year, I think. I wrapped it in March, somewhere around there. Um, about a month after I got on my P's. So I wrapped that, that stayed on there for ages. Well, not ages, about a year. For me, ages, <laughs> to keep a color. So I really missed that color, to be honest, because it was very low key, but at the same time, like, this looks awesome and I'm really, really happy with it. So yeah. $1,800 to wrap the car. The next thing was side skirts. So I got side skirts for my car for $300 off a place in Australia called, I think it's CT Auto Parts. I think that's the name of the one I got it off. There's a few different places you can get it from. Yeah, so it was CT Auto Parts, I think. And I painted it myself with just a rattle can. Also did the front lip at the same time, so I'm continuing this with that. And it was 50 bucks for the, what was it? Black and clear, so yeah. 50 bucks to paint the front lip and the side skirts. So all up, it was $350 for the side skirts. Uh, the next thing was I went and bought a turbo back exhaust off Facebook Marketplace. Brand new, never been touched, was the one I was looking at anyway, so 550 bucks. So that was a deal and a half. I saved about 300 bucks off of that. And the first thing I did basically when I bought the exhaust was buy just stainless pipe, I bought three meters of it. I've got a person I can go to that's gonna give it to me for cheaper, which is good. And yeah, bought that three meters for $100. So basically from that, I went and, well, made my car into a straight pipe. <laughs> and then I went and bought a Canon. So I went and bought a Varic system, which is X-Force. So they basically have the Valvetronic sort of exhaust system where you can make it quieter and louder. I do like that, but it's very, very quiet, even when it's open, unless you're on acceleration, because it's got two uh, sort of, how do I explain? It's got two waves to go through. So because it's got that really muffled way that it can also go through, it goes through that on idle, which means the car's pretty damn quiet on idle, which I'm not really a fan of. I quite like the loud idle, which is the reason why I'm going to quickly say this actually right now. Uh, I've got stain, well not stainless, uh, mild steel blast pipes on the back. I'm going to be making them stainless soon. I just need to learn how to weld stainless. So I want to learn how to TIG weld. I'll buy myself a TIG weld hopefully pretty soon, which would be awesome. Um, but yeah, just got stainless pipes in the back, just complete blast pipes. So the car is complete straight pipe the whole way back. 
It sounds awesome, but it's also extremely loud. So, like I was just saying, I don't know how to weld, so the one thing I'm also going to continue into this is getting... I paid one of the guys at work after... because I kind of got him to do everything gradually. So by the end of it, I paid him $200 to TIG weld. By the way, it cost a fortune to get people to TIG weld, so it's a pretty good price. And also, I'm taking out of the guy's time where he could be going home after work. So yeah, 200 bucks for him to do it. And then I went to an exhaust place and got them to weld up all the hangers on the stainless which was another $100, so $300 to get everything welded up. So, the next thing is custom plates. I have got my Basley custom plates, Basili, however you want to say. It's going to start raining, which is absolutely amazing. So that sucks. Hopefully, it doesn't really affect the camera. <laughs> We're going to stay here and keep doing it. Um, unless it gets really heavy, that is. So, yeah, so it was $500 for custom plates for my car. I'm pretty happy I got them, rather than those really ugly blue and white ones that come in Victoria and Australia. So, yeah. $500 for those custom plates. The next thing was gauges inside my car. So I've got that big gauge pod. And it sits in like the center console. And it also came with three different gauges. I had boost, um, oil pressure, and oil temp. So I got one of my good mates, Luigi, to help me install that. Absolute legend. Um, but for those gauges and the gauge pod, it was in like a pack. It was $769. The next thing is the interior. So I've gone and changed my car out from that really, well, I personally don't like it. On the stock WRXs where it's like that, what is it, the grey and like kind of whitish interior, or like it was like dark grey and light grey. I didn't like that personally, and I've gone and changed everything out to leather, which I got really, really, really cheap off Fletcher, which was $700, which by the way is extremely cheap because I got door cards and everything with it. So the next thing is my windscreen. I had to replace that because I decided that it was, I didn't even decide, I didn't know. The person in front of me was not in a good state to drive to say the least. They went off the side of the road, they didn't crash, they just went off the side of the road and flung a rock up at my windscreen, put a massive crack in it. So it was $250 to replace the windscreen. The next thing I did was the head unit. So the head unit in my car, I've just got one of those really simple um, single din ones to replace the one that was already in the car because I wanted Bluetooth audio because I didn't have Bluetooth audio. I need to replace my speakers and I'm going to get a different head unit which I'm really looking forward to getting because it's something that's like it's really really cool um which i'm going to get that probably in the semi near future for the car um and do like a full stereo system and everything which is kind of within the next few videos i'm going to be getting prepared for that stereo system was where is it stereo system what well, head system should i say head where is it head unit there we go 150 bucks so the next thing i did was coilovers i went and bought hsd coilovers for fifteen hundred dollars they were like they're kind of like the mid-range well they're still very very good coilovers uh, to be honest i really love them um they're really really comfortable i can't really say anything bad about them for fifteen hundred dollars i bought them for let me just clean the lens for you guys do 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 do, do. i sound an american as then there you go hopefully that's all right hopefully i haven't made it worse so yeah fifteen hundred dollars for the coilovers i don't regret that one little bit Hopefully I'll be able to sell them soon and get half my money back, which is awesome. <laughs> so the next thing I got was my car decided it wanted to blow a coolant line. And while I blew a coolant line, it also had when it decided it was going to burst the coolant reservoir. Don't ask me how it did it, but it did it. Um, and to replace the coolant reservoir, it was $600. Sorry, $600. $300. Yes, I went with a Mishimoto one aluminium. Um, may as well upgrade while I'm there, so when I break things, may as well upgrade. I've gone and bought one of them, installed that in that, and yeah, so $300 to do that. So the next thing I did to this car was actually a parent intake. So that that was actually a really, really cool upgrade because now, it's it's if you don't have one on your car and you have a turbo, get one. <laughs> Invest in one, because like seriously, it makes the driving experience so much better. Even a non-turbo car, like, Prime example, Hondas and their VTEC. Like, it sounds bad. <laughs> it honestly does. So yeah, cold air intake, if you haven't got one, invest in one. They're probably one of my best, or well, my best driver investments. Um, it's made my driver experience so much better, and so has the exhaust. If you don't have exhaust and intake, get both, it's worth it. So yeah, $600 for the pair intake. So the next thing I did, kind of ties in with the intake, was um, Dad actually made me a intake box for my car. Um, he's gone and router cut on at work a pretty much like a like a wall <laughs> between the engine and the intake and then a cover that goes over the top because in Australia 
by law you have to have it separating from the rest of the engine bay, the intake. So yeah, we got that done. I paid him 50 bucks to do it because obviously it took his time. Took, it took a long time to be honest. Got everything completely dialed in, took a lot of measuring and yeah, it was just very time consuming. So yeah, 50 bucks for that. Um, the next thing I did was I had to replace my, all my, well not all of them. I had to replace the two front outer and the front right inner CV boot. And that obviously you need grease and everything for it and you need to buy a few more things for it. So yeah, 200 bucks for fixing all the CV boots and whatnot. Um, yeah, basically that's it. So the next thing I had to fix, again, was the center shaft or I guess, I don't really know what it's called to be completely honest. I think it's a, I think it's called a tail shaft, but I'm just going to call it a center shaft because I swear I look it up online, it's called about a thousand different things. But basically it's the shaft that runs from the center diff to the rear diff. I think that's how it works. I'm not a mechanic, definitely wrong. Yeah, blast me in the comments. <laughs> but yeah, 150 bucks for that. Got it from a wreckers off a bug eye. It's working perfectly. Uh, the next thing I had to fix, I went on a bit of a fixing streak. I'm not going to put everything I had to fix in here. I'm just going to put all the key things. Um, was all my coolant lines because they all start to crack. I haven't replaced all of them. I've been doing one by one stupidly. I, should, I, will, I am going to buy a big pack off Mishi Motor and just do it all at once. But yeah, I just had to, I've just been replacing the ones that have been bursting on the, on the run pretty much, which I do not recommend. I would recommend just replace everything, but we're talking about me here. So yeah, 200, what was it? Yeah, 200 bucks for the coolant lines. The next thing I did was fire extinguisher. After that coolant line um, burst with the with the um, with the oh, coolant reservoir, um, it had a little mini fire inside the engine bay. So I was not taking risks. Um, <laughs> so I went and got myself a fire extinguisher. Which funny story? About a week after I got my fire extinguisher, um, my rear bumper caught on fire. Well, the vinyl caught on fire. Um, I basically I spat a big flame out the back and my vinyl caught on fire and had to take one of my mates to come up next to me and say hey mate your car's on fire what did I do I went outside and grabbed a rag out of all things and just um, suffocated it which yes you can do and it works but at the same time I had a fire extinguisher in the car but at the same time again like I didn't really need the fire extinguisher it was only a very little fire but it was enough to be worried about <laughs> so yeah I've had two fires in this car, hopefully there's no more. Please no more. <laughs> but yeah, $100 for that fire extinguisher and like it's like a little um, like a little holder inside the car. It goes right under my passenger seat. Um, the next thing is I kind of spent I kind of spent my money on it. No, I no, I didn't spend my money. I got it as a sponsorship from Mishimoto, which is awesome. Um, I got a shift knob. So, I'm going to put that in there as $70. Um, you can take that out. Don't really care. But I'm putting it in there at 70 bucks just because that's what it's worth. So yeah, 70 bucks for the shift knob inside my car. Um, the next thing I did was pretty much start at phase two. I sat on that phase one like Nardo on Quillovers for like about, what, say six months, seven months. Um, when I was on Quillovers and everything was done on that. I kind of just settled, settled down and just enjoyed it. I started phase two and the first thing I did to start that pretty much was do the wrap. So the wrap cost me $1,500 since I didn't have to pay anyone else to help me. Um, I had Fletcher, the absolute legend, come out and pretty much just pull everything apart and prep things, which was great. Like, we're going to hang out anyway, so may as well put him to work. <laughs> but yeah, so it was $1,500 for the wrap and obviously I did it all myself, so it didn't cost anything. So the next thing is my wheels. My lovely wheels that I absolutely love. <laughs> um, so they are work wheels, they're CR3Ps, um, 18 by 11 plus 3, so they're extremely aggressive. Um, yeah, I, ab I absolutely love them. So I actually bought them off a guy on Marketplace. Um, they're basically brand new, all he did was pretty much just import them, test them on his car, didn't like him, took them off. So he... I th he owns a, it's like an, it's like a, I think it's like an 86 online shop. Um, I think it's like, is it, is it Aero, Aero 86? No, it's not the shop, that's what he's called. It's like a light blue, pretty much the same color as this, not gonna lie. Um, 86, wide body, and it's in Queensland. So yeah, really, really cool car. I bought it off him for four and a half thousand dollars, which is an absolute steal for these wheels. To get him into Australia is gonna cost probably double that. Um, came with tires on it as well which is a plus very very bad tires gonna replace them when I can afford it <laughs> but keyword when I can afford it 
Um, and yeah, so that was four and a half thousand dollars. So the next thing I did was bags. So the kit was actually 4,200 or 4,200, um, but let's just say the kit was a huge stuff around and cost me a lot more money than I should have. Um, so yeah, spent $800 trying to get the kit working. Yes, it sounds like a lot and it's hard to believe that little fittings and new lines and I pretty much replaced everything but the running parts of it as such. So compressor, tank and um, actual bags themselves. And it, we had to, anyways, long story, they were a horrible thing to install. They're fine now, they're on the car, but yes, quite expensive. Thanks to my lovely camera for dying real quick. Um, yeah, I didn't expect them to cost that much, um, but they did. So it is what it is, $5,000 for the bags. Next thing is flares. So the flares I got in the car are Carlton flares. You have to get them off a Facebook page. Um, they don't sell them anywhere else but that Facebook page. Um, to get them to Australia, it cost me $1,200. That's like including shipping and obviously, I think they're 800 or 900, I can't really remember to be honest. I think they're $800 or any between $700 and $900 to actually get them made. And then it was like $150 for shipping, but they got stuck at customs. I don't understand why I had to pay for anything, still don't but I had to pay 200 bucks for them in storage. I really don't know why. Took me eight months to get them, well no, six months to get them, so it was a pain. But yeah, so it cost me $1,200 to get the flares to my doorstep. Um, the next thing, well, I did this probably previously as well, but I got blob eye tail lights. So they were $250 off one of my mate's cars. Um, well, not really my mate's cars, one of my mate's mate's cars. Um, he crashed it and I took them off the back of his car including the loom and everything, yes. So it was $250 for the blob eye lights. Um, the next thing were these front lights here. I absolutely love them, though. There are new front lights on CT Auto Parts, which is where I bought them from. Um, and they've got like this really cool little pattern there as well. And I'm really digging them and I think I'm gonna get them. I just don't know when. <laughs> but I absolutely love these and I'm extremely happy with them for the moment so I'm not gonna worry about getting them anytime soon um, but yeah in the, in the future I will definitely get those other ones because they are awesome um, so yeah for the front lights it was $650 so I've also got those tinted blinkers just here you can't see that but yeah tinted blinkers that was free when I'm a good mates Ben gave it to me thank you Ben I love you Ben <laughs> but yes my man's gave me and hooked up some tinted sequential blinkers which is really cool actually um, so I had two failed tune attempts thanks to my car being not the smartest car in the world and not having tester cables which is what you need to tune a car um, yeah so two failed attempts it cost me $200 each time didn't cost me anything I just wanted to make sure I gave that guy money for his time absolute legend I love him <laughs> it's just a shame I can't go through him because I have to get either an aftermarket ECU or I have to go to a proper shop so they can trace back when it was when the cables were cut um, yeah, so it's gonna be a bit of a pain to get this thing tuned and it's I'm shattered about it to be honest So yeah, probably gonna have to look at an aftermarket ACU which sucks But yeah, $400 for two failed tune attempts. The next thing well, I did it before the tune I got a fuel pump that was $200 not really that much to talk about with that one um, We're pretty much getting to the end now. I'm praying this video isn't too long. It probably pretty probably will be pretty long which is Kind of frustrating and I'm sorry. It's probably gonna oh I pray. I'm praying it's not gonna be longer than like 20 minutes So the next thing I'm talking about is pretty much just stuff like oils and like buying coolant and everything. Just kind of minor service things that build up over time. Um, I'm gonna put $600 in for that. Definitely way more than that, but I'm putting $600 in because I don't know what it was. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go a lot less than what I think it is, if that makes any sense. And then stuff that I haven't actually installed yet. So I've got about $2,000 worth of stuff sitting in my bedroom and throughout the house that I haven't actually installed yet. Um, they're going to be videos in the future. I've just got to be, I just got to get off my bum to be honest and just do it. Because I've, I've just been really, really lazy, <laughs> if I'm being honest. The last few weekends I've just sat down and done nothing. Basically that's it for stuff that's on and about to go on the car. Um, for stuff that's actually on the car, not including that stuff I was just talking about, I haven't installed it yet. The grand total, I'm not, <laughs> I'm, I'm ashamed to admit this because I could have a house, <laughs> but I have this 
which I'm not I'm not mad about to be honest. I love this car to death. Um, so the grand total is forty five thousand two hundred and thirty nine dollars. Let that sink in. <laughs> I'm an apprentice that earns less than that a year, so that is quite embarrassing. Yeah, that's a lot of money, but. We had fun. So, <laughs> that still kills me to say $45,239 on stuff that that's what you see right now and what you hear, I guess. <laughs> um, stuff that I, including stuff that I have installed, it's just $47,839, so just add $2,000 onto that. Um, if we're counting on road costs, it's even further up. Um, <laughs> So keeping on road, obviously I've got Rego in Australia, which is $1,600. And also insurance, which I pay a lot for. And that was $7,580 right to this day. So I've, that's, that's what I've calculated. You want to be any louder? In Australia, you have to pay a ridiculous amount of money to own a car on your P's that's not a Swift, basically. Um, so yeah, it cost me $7,580 to this date for insurance. Um, so on road, to keep it on the road cost as such, was $9,180. So yes, far from cheap. Including keeping on the road costs for my car, this, this honestly pains me to say, it was $57,019. Um, that's a lot of money. Including keeping it on the road. Uh, was it a mistake? Probably. Am I smart? 100% not. But I had fun. And I still am having fun. And I love this car to death. And I would never sell it. Hopefully. That's basically it to be honest. Including, like if I were to include, I went to like three or four different places to actually service my car. So I add a thousand bucks onto that. Um, it wasn't too bad though. But yeah. So basically this thing is an absolute money pit, <laughs> to say the least. It's a Subaru, what do you expect? I'm um, young, I can have fun, so I'm not really, well no I am ashamed of it, but it's not really something I like to put out there for everyone in here, but a lot of people have asked me how much does it cost me to get here? Um, so yeah, that, that, that's how much it costs me to get to where it is right now. You don't have to do it like this, you can do it a lot cheaper. I'm just stupid and very pedantic about doing everything brand names as such which is a really bad sort of way to look at things but I do which is unfortunate but is what it is looking at getting another car soon that I don't have to worry about that um, I'm gonna give you guys a quick little it's probably gonna be a s I don't know if I want to say it well probably you kind of really gathered it probably gonna be either a Civic or an E36 let me know which one you guys would rather see. I'm leaning massively to the Civic, but an E36 I would still absolutely love. But I'm thinking of doing it as like a, like a budget build. And that's why I'm kind of thinking more of the Civic way, because I can get everything so cheap, and I can do stuff performance-wise with the car, and actually be kind of quick for cheap. Like, ridiculously cheap. So, probably going to go the Civic. Um, but yeah, that's in the future. Hopefully within the next few months, maybe. I'm not going to promise anything. Um, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to just kind of, you know, having a car that I can just not complete. No, I will. I'll just completely cheap out on parts, have fun with it, actually have fun rather than stress about things. Because at the moment, I'm kind of like, I enjoy driving this, but at the same time, it's kind of like, I worry about getting pulled over or getting certain things happening to the car even. Um, more than I do enjoy driving it, which really sucks, but at the same time, I still love this car to death. But yeah, just something you have to weigh up. But yeah, anyways, this is probably the end of the video on how much I spent on this car. A lot of money is the answer. <laughs> um, and yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, it's kind of given me a bit of an insight of how I got to where I am with the car. So yeah, anyways, appreciate you guys for watching big time and see you guys in the next one.